everybody, welcome back. And uh, today I want to talk to you about the power of your mind and keeping it focused on the present moment. And uh, it's something that I've actually been doing some research on and studying because I'm going to admit I have found myself feeling a little anxious or stressed lately. I know I'm not alone in this. Uh, the last few weeks, I've had a lot of things going on in my businesses and uh, I love what I do, but you know, it's been a little, a little crazy, a little hectic, and I'm sure I'm not alone. Um, and so, so I'm going to tell you, I, I'm going to share with you. I'm so excited to get into this with you guys today because I want to share with you some things I've been learning. Um, and what I learned is that studies show, this was really crazy for me. Studies show that people spend almost half their waking hours actually not living fully in the present moment. That means less time enjoying the good things happening right, right now, right around you, because we get so busy playing this mental ping pong between yesterday and tomorrow. So in other words, what keeps us from living in the present moment or keeps us from being very mindful it, and what actually help, what actually is bringing on the anxiety or the feelings of stress is that we get caught up in thinking about the past or the future way too much. And when we spend too much time in the past, sometimes it can make us even feel like remorseful or sad because what happens is we tend to gravitate towards the things that didn't work out so well and we ruminate on it. And that causes some stress, right? And, and then there are times when we fast forward too far into the future and we start worrying about things that haven't happened yet or that might not ever happen and it creates anxiety. And really, I know we've all heard this before and, and it's easier said than done, which is why I wanted to have this conversation with you today, is how do we ground ourselves and stay focused on the present moment? Right. And and talk about not just all the reasons why we can't live in the present, but really to come up with some ways, some some tools and, and that will help us do that, because that's one of the things that I I really intend every week on this podcast is not to just talk about stuff, but to give you the solutions or the tools uh, that will help you make changes in your life, right? That's why I do this because I want to create influence and have an impact on the way you think and have that become, you know, uh, an, an impact on, on things that you do in your life and so that you get the results that you want most. So my goal today is to give you some ways to stay more present and help you understand why this is so important. So I have some notes and we're going to go through a bunch of them. Um, so I think, again, just just to connect with why this is so important, I think um, the bottom line, what what I have found in all the things I've been reading lately about this topic and listening to on other podcasts, too, is that being present minded is the key to staying healthy and happy. Because of what I just said to you before about those feelings that show up when we spend too much time ping, you know, playing ping pong between yesterday and tomorrow, right? So I think when we can stay more present minded, we are able to be more strategic and logical in our thinking, less emotional. Um, it cuts down on all that worrying. It cuts down on getting stuck on certain things, right? And I think it can help you feel more connected to the people and the things around you. And I think that the most amount of joy is when we connect with what's happening around us at the present moment. So when we're present and exerting our ability to be mindful, not only does it make us happier, but I think it equips us to deal with adversity and challenges and pain more uh, appropriately, because we are really in, 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 I think, a strength zone at that point, right? So it's going to give us the improved ability to cope with anything negative that might show up, right? So that's another, I think, important part of why we want to stay more present. And um, I thought this would be an important thing to talk about, because I'm sure I'm not alone in this, right? I think that uh, well, I know I'm not. When I read research, it says that, you know, uh, 
people spend half their waking hours actually not living fully in the present moment, I realize that this is probably a bigger problem than any of us want to admit. And so I think that's because, you know, like, why is it so difficult to live in the present moment? Well, because life is, is there's a lot of stuff happening around us every day. Um, I think life has become busier, more hectic at times. Um, I think we get engrossed in a lot of what we do. And I think that, you know, this concept of living in the present can also get misunderstood. And, you know, that's why I wanted to talk to you about how you can seize the day and really go beyond that and, and not just relishing the moments, but honestly, finding a way to live in the present so that you can have less stress in your life. And I think that, you know, that's the key, right? Because stress will kill you. And I think for us to understand that uh, is, is really what the message is about today. So the problem with living in the present, you know, is that we come up with a lot of cancel, just cancel that. So when, when we look at the challenges of living in the present moment, I think we just have to be aware of some of the pitfalls that might show up right? The things that will pull our attention away and distract us. I think um, that, you know, mastering this is learning how to strike a balance, right? Learning how to strike some equilibrium and understanding that there are going to be valid reasons why we want to think about what happened in the past, because there are lessons we can learn from that. And I think there are some really important elements of being a futuristic thinker when it comes to being a visionary and leading a company or leading a team and creating goals, right? So we know that we we will spend some time going in the past and also fast forwarding into the future. But I think we just have to manage how much time we spend there and what the purpose of going there is, is about so that um, we don't get into that tug of war feeling again. So I, I think it's about honoring our past and also safeguarding our future. So I just want to also add that if you've been feeling very distracted lately, that's probably a sign that you're not living in the present moment. And if you find, and we've all been there, right, where um, we do something sort of mindlessly and then all of a sudden, you know, what, whether it's scrolling or just sitting there eating popcorn while you're watching Netflix, um, you know, half listening to a conversation, right? I mean, we all do it. We're, we all have times when we're feeling a little distracted. But I think that when it starts to get in the way of completing tasks or being effective, or if it creates a lot of those feelings I talked about a few minutes ago in terms of stress and anxiety, then it's it's really getting in your way. And, and then it's something that we have to address, right? So I think um, what I'd like to do is share with you some tips for help for being, let me back that up, sorry. So I'd like to share some tips that I have discovered for being more present. And I get it, so for some of us being attentive can be difficult, but um, I do think that with some practice, you can sharpen this skill set. So you take some of these and decide what might work for you. Uh, maybe you want to work on all seven, maybe that's a lot. And I would say you start with one, but I think any of these things um, that you implement would start to help you become more present, right? So the first thing is to understand the myth around multitasking because multitasking is not an effective use of your time. Even though a lot of us have been like led to believe that this is a, a really great quality to have. I've even seen people put it on their resumes. Um, but understand this, that multitasking, while it might be hard to avoid entirely, um, is, is really not being present, right? When you really sit down, think about this, if you're juggling several things at the same time, you can't give 100% to anything. So you're really not being present. So if you could avoid multitasking more, right? I, like I said, I get it. 
Uh, I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes it might be hard to completely eliminate multitasking from your life, but understand that if you could really work on this uh, and, and reduce the amount of time that you find yourself multitasking and, and, and get into doing one thing at a time, I think you'll find that you'd be much more effective. And the way to do that might be to start time blocking, right? So that you can set aside a certain amount of time to do one thing, right? One task rather than multiple tasks. And that, you know, the benefit of that is that you will apply more focus and find that, you know, that will probably get you through the task even faster. Um, and so I believe that over time, when you develop a skill set around, you know, focusing on one thing at a time, you actually will get more done. So that's the first thing I would share with you today. Another tip that will help you become more present is just to get connected to your breath. And that's why I love yoga so much. And, you know, I, I uh, am very intentional about doing, uh, by practicing more yoga each week and, and, you know, getting myself to just connect with breath. That's a big part of yoga. But the thing about your breath, mindful breathing, right, is a, is a very powerful tool for managing your emotions. When you can regulate your breathing, you can regulate your nervous system. And so by mindful breathing, and there's a lot of research that's out there or some techniques that you can find um, that can really help you improve your mental wellness. It can help you live more in the moment. So there are, there is a lot of positive, um, that can, a lot of positive, positive things that can come from breath work. And there are, um, there are some great coaches that focus on that and they just help you to pay attention to your breathing and basically what's going on in your body. And by bringing your focus into your breathing, it again, helps you to eliminate distractions. Um, and that can be a great way for you to feel more present. Another, another tool would be meditation, right? So it's kind of hard to talk about this without talking about meditation, because that's the premise of one of the, one of the core uh, aspects of meditation is, is getting really focused within. And that is all about being present in your body and your mind, right? So that would be another way to do that. And there's lots of ways to practice meditation. There are some different, um, techniques that might work for you. And uh, it could be something simple like taking a break in the in the day at some point to sit in a quiet place with your eyes closed and just allow your thoughts to come and go. Don't try to control that. Don't try to analyze it. Don't try to judge it. Just maybe again, focus on your breath and, and allow yourself to just connect with your thoughts, right? Um, I can tell you that meditation gets easier with practice. <laughs> For a lot of us, it can be challenging, but I think just a couple minutes a day, um, you could find uh, a lot of, uh, I think, value in, in, in what meditation can do for your mind and your body. And of course, there's lots of great meditation apps um, like Headspace and Calm that you might want to try too. And that, and that could give you more of that guided meditation if that's something you want to try. Um, you know, another thing that I have have practice and it's funny as I was preparing for this podcast I'm like yeah I got you know I gotta make time for that more uh and and this is something else that I love about yoga it's it's the concept of mindful movement mindful movement and listen exercise is such an important part of our overall health and well-being but what I mean by mindful movement is that you connect with your body and your movement along with your breath and so yoga is one uh, example of mindful movement, as is Tai Chi or uh, Pilates or, or uh, Qigong. And that that could be a really great way for you to get some exercise, for you to slow down, for you to get mindful, for you to connect with your breath and your body. Um, so, so that might be something you want to try. I... Another thing that I think is helpful is being aware of the distractions around us. And I just want to be real about this to you guys. Like, listen, distractions aren't always bad. 
Sometimes a distraction can serve as a great pattern interrupt, right? So in other words, a distraction when you're feeling sad or angry or anxious might be exactly what you need at that moment, right? To get out of that, that pattern of thinking and allow you to move into a different state. So all distractions are not bad. It's just understanding how to reduce them at times and manage them a little bit because some distractions uh, could cause failure. Uh, I, you've heard me say that before, right? Some distractions could get you off track. And, um, you know, so like, for instance, listening to podcasts, which I'm grateful that you do every day here on Mojo. Um, but the thing is, you can't listen to them all day long, right? Because we have other things we need to do when we have, um, you know, obligations and responsibilities and stuff that we have to get done. So we can't sit here all day and listen to podcasts. So we have to manage that a little bit. So um, I think that this sounds really simple, but understanding what distractions are, are positive or let's say negative and reducing some of them might make it easier for us to focus on the here and now. And so I think that was important for me to mention. Another thing that came up so much in my research on this topic was the power of journaling. Well, think about it, right? When you're journaling and you're writing, especially when you're actually using a pen and, and writing in a journal or notebook, you really are paying attention to your thoughts and you're very, you're very connected to that. And so I think that is why journaling shows up as um, a part of emotional wellness and, and, and mental health, um, because it does relieve some stress. We're able to pour out some of our thoughts and feelings on that paper. And there's different types of journaling. Um, and, and it's interesting because I, I know sometimes when this comes up, some people push back, they roll their eyes and they say, you know, I'm just, I'm not, a, I don't, I'm not into it. I'm not a writer. I'm not a journaler. Well, look, journaling can take a lot of forms and, it could be where you just have this stream of consciousness writing, where you're just, you know, connecting pen to paper and you write whatever pops into your head. So it just pops onto the paper. That's fine. Uh, it could be that you are journaling what has happened in your day. It could be a topic based journal, like gratitude journal. Um, or idea journal, like where you're writing down just your creative thoughts, ideas you want to implement, or you're writing down what you feel grateful for. So there are lots of ways to journal. You could also use journal prompts um, where you, I, I've shared journal prompts in some of my classes or in coaching too, and it just gives you a topic to write about or a question and um, that could be what guides then your free writing for, for you to have that question and for you to be able to then just write. But I, I think that there's so much value, right? It's so cathartic when we can just pour out what we're thinking and feeling onto paper. Because when all of our thoughts stay in our head, um, our emotions can shape what we're thinking at any moment. But if we get it out onto paper, it's sort of living there in the book and it becomes existential and it, it becomes something that we could either decide to work with and use, or maybe the, the process of journaling was just to kind of get rid of it, right? Just to sort of throw up a little bit and get it out of our body. Um, so journaling can be powerful. So those are some ways that maybe you can uh, live more in the moment because, I think living in the moment means you're paying attention. I think that oftentimes, if we're honest, we can find that we're a little asleep at the wheel and our we're, our attention is being pulled in so many directions. And I think when we can live more in the moment, we get clarity. And when we connect to present, we have more power. Um, so that to me is is part of of the awareness around this is is that I want to be in. I want to, I want to feel more connected to my own power. I don't want to give my power away. Um, and again, research is showing that mindfulness, uh, you know, has a, a lot of effects on us, a range of, of benefits on us uh, that could, again, it starts with, you know, positive mental health, but it could improve our relationships with other people. Um, as I said, it can reduce stress. It helps us with focus, helps us manage anxiety. Um, and I think being present can help us savor enjoyable experiences, right? I, 
I don't know about you, but I have found myself, I've caught myself sometimes, even on great vacations that I was dreaming about and that I planned that I wanted to go on so badly, I found myself like allowing my mind to take me somewhere else. And I was missing all this great stuff happening right around me. So I was able to then bring myself back. And, and so I think when we're more present, we can enjoy and savor the things that are happening, create more wonderful memories from those enjoyable experiences, which I think then allows the people we're doing it with, right? The people that are on that experience with us to feel like we're more connected to them. I think by being present, we can show the people we love how important they are to us. Um, and listen, I get it. We don't, I, I don't think we intend to make anyone that we really love feel slighted, but by being distracted and not being present, that can happen. They can feel like, you know, you're, you're not paying attention to them. And so that's an important part of mindfulness. And, uh, and we talked about productivity. We talked about how being able to fully focus on your tasks or, or chores means that you're going to be more effective and more productive, probably get it done faster. Um, when you can avoid all the multitasking and distractions and, and really distracted thinking. So a lot to think about here and uh, no pun intended, but I did want to share with you um, some things that has really come up for me recently. You know, I think that as we live bigger, fuller lives and we design the life that we want, we just have to be aware of some things. And I think being more mindful is one of them because it, you know, this life is important to us and we only come through here once. So we want to savor and enjoy uh, every experience and there's something to learn from every experience. But if we're a little distracted, we're not going to pull out the meanings uh, of those experiences as we should. So I trust you needed to hear this today. I thank you for being with me every week. And if you found value in this, I really would appreciate it if you could uh, share our podcast with others. If you haven't hit that subscribe button or follow button, do that right now. Uh, please uh, be a part of our community and share this with other people um, because I think you have the power to create influence and by sharing good things, uh, you help other people. So thank you for that. And um, I will see you again on our next episode of Monday Morning Mojo. Take care.